name is Andrew Kabala and I'm a high school math teacher. Uh, I'm going to go over one of my favorite sites to use in person and in virtual settings and that's called Deck Toys. I'm only going to be able to scratch the surface of what this site can do. There are plenty of other options, activities, and capabilities. I'm only going to give a brief overview of some of the features. Uh, I hope you find this informative and helpful. If you have any questions, please email me at uh, this address. And uh, have fun and take care of yourself. Here okay, we're going to do the basics of Deck Toys. So we're going to create an account first. You can either type in deck.toys, uh, you can Google search Deck Toys, um, or you can click the link that's in the document, uh, Deck Toys for Teachers. All right, now I'm already logged in somehow. I'm going to log out. And you're going to, so this site right here, this, this is the home page. This is one way that students can access your classroom, which I'll get into. Uh, but let's, for now, just do teacher sign up. My computer is apparently running slow. All right, so the best way, now I already have one with my uh, school account. Um, I'm going to just create one with my personal account just to show you brand new what it looks like, hopefully. Okay, so once you log in, there's a couple of things. Your, your, your basic account information is over here. Um, you get a... Um, video from Boon Jin, who is, I believe, creator of this site. Um, you can watch. You don't have to. I'll get into uh, some other videos that uh, are, are helpful uh, at the end of this video. Uh, so let's just uh, talk about now, uh, if somehow you get logged out, you just basically log back in by clicking on sign in with Google, uh, and it should save your password and all that good stuff. So a couple features here. There, at the top there's my dashboard. That's all your stuff. Uh, there's something called deck gallery, uh, which I'll get into towards the end of the video. Um, that's basically a collection of teacher made, already made um, decks uh, that's I found useful and help. Um, so classroom. Um, this is would be your uh, kind of like Google Classroom in a way. Uh, let's call it Geometry um, 1AC. Okay, and then Classroom's created. This is the uh, link that you would send to students. They'd have to type in deck.toys slash geometry 1AC, or there's other ways which I'll talk about later on, but th there it is right there. Um, you can go to Teachers View. Um, and what you'll see is that it already comes preloaded with a, uh, so, and I'll get into this in a moment. I'm just going to continue as teacher for now. Um, they've already kind of created, um, a how to teacher walkthrough. You could go through that. Um, but when your students go here, this right here is the deck and that's what they work on. You can assign multiple decks. They'd, they'd be listed along the left hand side here. I've often just uh, assigned them one. I try to keep it simple. Um, if you want to get out of here, you got to click the cog and then back to dashboard. All right, so classrooms, I, I usually create one classroom per class, um, you know, one AC, two BD, and so on. I'll get into that a little later. Um, to create your first actual deck, so that, uh, that's a classroom. Now we're going to talk about what's a deck. Um, so right here, create a new lesson. That's where you create a deck. So let's just call it practice deck. Practice deck. 
Now what comes up is this wizard, I believe. Um, sometimes it comes up with this first. Um, you can go through this and it kind of builds it for you. Um, I tend to just X out of that and just start from scratch. Um, so what you're going to see is your title here, practice deck. Um, over here is something called study sets. We'll get to that later in the video. Um, activity, slide activity, study set, and signpost. I'm going to go over signpost. A signpost, you can just drag it in there and you can have as many as you want. Um, you can title it. Um, start here. And basically a signpost is just kind of a uh, crossroad. So you can have paths coming off of that uh, leading to uh, other slide activities or study sets. Um, basically you can click on it and type a little starting message or you know like uh, you can also click edit activity. Basically just a note uh, to tell students what to do. Um, sometimes I have those in there, sometimes I don't. Uh, you can also lock them um, which we'll get into uh, maybe again I can't go through everything. Um, so I'm going to, uh, the next thing I want to focus on is a slide activity. Um, so you, again, you just drag it over. You can drag over as many as you want. You can edit the title. Let's call this uh, slide activities. Um, you can change the color of the little placeholder. You can actually change the icon if you want to. You can do all this stuff again a lot of stuff to go through so I might not get to everything but if you click on it it then takes you to where you can edit so think of the slide activity as a PowerPoint um, you can there are slide templates you can load up um, over here you can add new slides you can duplicate you can delete you can switch order um, you can go back to this map um, you can go back to your dashboard and all that stuff. I'll get to preview in a little bit, um, but may, you, you could just type information. Uh, that's one thing to do. Um, make sure you click save. Um, and then when the students see it, that's just what they're going to see, information. You can also do uh, multiple choice questions. Which one is correct? Save, and you could say uh, A... B, C, and let's make it B. Um, you can also um, insert a blank image if you wanted to then write on that. You can remove it. Um, you can upload images, PDFs, PowerPoints. You can insert um, uh, pictures. You can insert um, links. You can embed sites and videos. You can embed uh, GIFs. Um, there, there's a lot you can do just with the slide activities. Um, it's basically the main way to get your information across. I very often embed my um, videos and then go from there. Uh, so slide activity is probably the one that you're going to use the most. Another reason why you're going to use slide activities a lot, I'm going to bring out a new one here. Uh, let's call this one slide apps. Within these activities, Activity or slide activities, they have what are called slide apps. Um, they're all right up here, um, along along with some down here. Tools we'll get to when we go over what to do in class. Um, real quick, text uh, that you basically give the students a question, they can type in an answer like it's on Twitter. Draw, you can have either a blank picture or you can uh, upload your own picture for them to actually draw on. Place marker is, um, think of like a map and you want to, you, you, there's a little place marker. They can put their place marker anywhere on your uploaded image. Uh, quick pull, um, that's good for, they have a uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, neutral. They have one to five stars. They have um, just thumbs up, thumbs down, things, and multiple choice, I believe, too. Um but that's like for uh, getting quick responses from students. Photo, you can have them uh, access their camera and take a, a photo of themselves or, or, or their work. Um, or even just, I think, any photo, uh, even a screenshot. Upload, they can, even, they can upload uh, screenshots and images. And I, I don't know if they can upload 
um, actual documents. Voice, I don't know if everyone has access to that, but the students, you could ask them to speak um, their, their answer, and I think they get about 30 seconds. Um, so these can all be applied to any of the slides in these slide activities. Uh, down here, these get, they call it supercharged, but um, you can have the students find keys along their way, and the keys can then, un uh, then uh, open locks. Locks I use a lot. You can actually set that um, so that, like, in, if you're doing a math lesson, uh, the, the combination to the lock is the answer to the question or something like that. You can also have it be a word. Um, they have directions. It's, again, a lot. Checkpoint, they, that's something where it actually stops them. They have to come to you physically and show you that they're done with something, and then you can move them past the checkpoint. Gauntlet is part of, um, uh, this this kind of makes it a game. I'll, I'll, again, if I have time, I'll get into that. You can insert multiple choice questions as a slide app. Um, I like this one because you actually have to get it right in order to move on. Drag and drop I use a lot. Um, that's where you can, let's say you upload a PDF, and then um, you can actually kind of cut it up and make it into a drag and drop where the answers are all around um, the page and they have to drag it into the right area. Jigsaw, it actually makes whatever picture you have into a, a jigsaw puzzle. Um, so what I'll do next is I'll just go through some of these, uh, kind of show you how to build it, uh, maybe the ones that I use the most, uh, and we'll go from there. So again, these are slide apps that you would insert into a slide activity. I'm going to show you the basic setup of, uh, I counted them up, seven of my favorite slide apps. So the first one that I use a lot is text. So this is where you can text in something like, uh, let's, and I just found an image. I'm going to, just to show you that it's easy to copy and then control V it. Oh, I should probably cancel out that. Control V. Maybe. There it is. It just uploads. All right. Got the, the, the app here. You can also slide it over and actually put it into the picture. Um, you'll see the difference, the students will see that difference, but um, let's ask a question. Is a hot dog a sandwich? And so now the students, uh, when they get to the slide, would have to click on this and actually type in and submit an answer. Um, the next one I like to use, so I'm going to just do another, I added another slide. I'm going to do a slide app. This one's draw. Um, you can just do a blank image, and then what the students can do is like, click on this. Uh, you can there are templates for it, but I'm just going to use current slide image or even black uh, blank black background. Um, and th the students will then have uh, some drawing tools. The students will have some drawing tools that they can use. There's a pen; they can change the color of the pen. There's a, a line tool. Um, so again, the students will see that. Uh, you can also have it be, uh, let's remove this. You could have it be, uh, let's take a, a screenshot of Batavia here. I'm going to do Control C. I'm going to go back to Deck Toys, Control V. And now what will happen is that the students can actually draw on this picture. Um, I think they can even text within that, I, I'd have to look at that again, but um, the next one, a uh, quick poll, you can configure the quick poll, you can have it be thumbs up, thumbs down, check uh, true, false, or uh, check mark X, um, this is up, down, neutral, one to five stars, multiple choice, uh, so you could do that, uh, you could ask a question like, how are you doing? Always want to make sure you click save, and we'll just have it be the thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, the next one that I like to use is, uh, where to go? The lock. Uh, with the lock, configure lock, there's lots of options here. Uh, the default is numbers. You could have it be a text, a QR code, a key, uh, no lock, but I don't know why I'd, Put in a lock if you're not going to have one. Others, they have voice. I've never really done anything with that. Directional lock. 
I usually have just used the number lock. Uh, so you might say something like, what is 4 plus uh, 7? Or let's make it 8. Save that. And then in your lock, you would configure, and the password is now 12, because 4 plus 8 is 12. So they won't be able to get past this slide until they unlock the lock. Um, again, you can have uh, set visibility, you could duplicate it, um, but configure lock, this is where you can, you can give them a hint, um, positives, negatives, all that good stuff. Uh, the next one I like to use, again, add another slide, add a slide app multiple choice question uh, so you can it comes preloaded with one that you can just do right within the app and they're allowed to get that one wrong you can it's a good way to collect data uh, using this one down here but if you want to just make sure that they get it right uh, you type in your question here you can have as many answer options as you want if you're a math teacher they do allow you to use uh, latex um, if you know how to code with latex I always change the answer type to exact match. Uh, it can be the exact match of one or more than one. Um, these points I'll get into later on. Uh, you can give them feedback, uh, right or wrong. Uh, so that's a multiple choice question. Again, you can just type the question here. Uh, you could have more than one of these. You could say, okay, let's do two or three, and on and on. Um, add another slide. I also like to use this. Uh, drag and drop. Oh, sorry, I have to. Uh, so I would upload. This is where I'd upload a an, an image or a PDF. So I'm going to upload just to give you an idea of. Uh, let's do again just to show you. I'm going to upload this. I don't even know what it is. Oh, okay. Uh, and I can do a drag and drop. So in here, you can either do jigsaw, drag elements back to the original positions, or target, drag elements to assign target areas. I've done both. I've mainly used this target one where I'll take like this area, this is what I want, where I want something to go, or that's what will be able to be dragged. Where should that go? Let's put it, you know, right over here. Um, you can add drag text. Um, you can change all of this down here um, and then save it and then the students that becomes a drag and drop activity uh, and then the last one so I'm going to add one more slide that I'm going to go over I think I might have gone out of order oh place marker um, so again let's get that map back oops I might have done it on this slide here. And again, you can delete these too. Um, so the place marker, uh, when, when they click on it, you can set it to current slide image. This is a, a grid, a number line, maps. Uh, you can change what it looks like. You can have it so that they can change their answer. Uh, I'm just going to go with that. Uh, so now let me get into uh, how can you tell if you're doing this right. So right over here, it says preview deck. If you click that, it's going to take where you are. I don't know what the default is, but you can set it to what you would see in a classroom, what a student would see in a classroom, and then you can actually have it where you can view it as yourself and one student or yourself and two students. I'm going to click on Continue as Teacher. So right over here, this is what you'd see in class as the teacher. So as the teacher, you can move around all over here. Um, you can turn, and I'll get into this stuff uh, later on in the video, but you can kind of see where students are. Um, but this is this side is a demo of what a student would see. So is a hot dog a sandwich? Um, yes, because it's on bread. And I would submit. All right, and then as a student, you can see, so this is the draw. So th these are all the draw options they have up here. It's pen. You can change the color. They can draw on it and then submit. And later on, I'll show you how you can actually show those to a class. Um, So 
so again this is the what this is the um preview deck and it, it just kind of allows you to see what the students would see and then if you want to go back to your dashboard just go back to your dashboard and you can continue editing Another important part of a deck are these study sets. So over here, you'd actually create a study set. You think of these like flashcards. Um, they have example ones you can import from other decks. You can do Quizlet. Uh, you can even do it through a spreadsheet or a coding language, I think. Um, I'm just going to do a blank one, create. All right, right here, I'm going to give it a name. Let's do, um, we'll do Spanish colors, even though I don't know too much Spanish. Uh, so let's do red. I believe that's, no, it's going to give me a def, it automatically fills this in, but I can just get rid of that. Rojo, I think, green, All right, and then save it. All right, so what you can do with this you go over here, you insert a study set activity. So let's call this um, colors. All right, now if you edit the activity, they have a bunch of games, like Word Wheel, Rock, all of these right up here. Um, and it depends on, some of these use one study set, some use two. Like I like to use, uh, where is it here, sort. So you have two categories and they have to put them in, you know, complementary or supplementary something like that uh, here it's just memory where they okay I want to find yellow nope doesn't work so how about this one nope and it goes on from there or you can have uh, a maze like a match is a is a good one you they give blue and that's this one so and it kind of shows you if you're right um, flashcard uh, so it would be Good to play around with all of these. I, I've done, I've used, let's see here, sort me a lot, um, sequence, match, lines, maze, pairs is a good one to do in class. Um, but that's just what I've used the most of. I mean, I've probably used each of these once at least. Uh, advanced settings, you can give them a message at the start, uh, a message at the end. Answers must all be correct. They, the students, uh, they hate this, but I love it. They have to all be correct in order for them to be moved on. Uh, challenges I'll get into when we talk about what this looks like in class. Um, but these study sets, you create your study sets over here. Um, again, you can add another study set, create, give it a title, and then you can even import some pictures, um, delete, you can preview, you can change it from English to all these uh, for, for math and science. I use this latex math expressions a lot. Uh, so it's it's a way to insert different vocabulary and make it into a game, or not just vocabulary, a, a lot of different ways to utilize that. But that's a study set, and you can add those in uh, as you would a slide activity and connect them, and then you could go from there. All right, so let's say that you've uh, edited your deck, you've got all your study sets that you want in there, you've got all your slide activities, all your slide apps built in. Now you want to assign it. You can either go up here to assign, and you can assign it to any of your classrooms. Um, you know, here's a, the test class and then Geometry 1AC that we created earlier. You could also go to my dashboard. You could go into the actual classroom teacher's view. I want to just continue as a teacher. They, this is the pre-recorded deck. I'm going to unassign. You don't have to do that, but I'm going to unassign that. Continue as teacher. And then up here you can select which deck you want to assign. Okay, and they're all here. You can change folders and everything, but practice deck. And now that's the one that the students will see when they enter your classroom. Now, when you want students to join this, you're going to give them this address deck.toys 
and then it's going to be slash, and then whatever you named it. Um, that's that's what you you could either do it you know via Google Classroom or email or however you want them to get on. That's the link that you'd want to send to them, and then they would sign in with Google, and uh, everything should be a go. You'd, you'd start seeing students right up here in the teacher view. All right, so to give you a sense of what goes on during a class, um, what I'm going to do is go back to Practice Deck. I'm in the editing part. I'm going to just click on Preview Deck. And I want to do it with two students. So what we're going to see here, this is the teacher's view. So this is what you'd see in class on your Deck Toys tab. Uh, this is what the students would see. So here's uh, student middle, student right. Um, on your teacher view, a uh, couple things. There's this cog that has settings. Uh, you can change full screen, select another deck, reset activities. Strict paths being on means that uh, if you have these pathways, once they get through activities, it unlocks the pathway and they have to follow those pathways. Student apps I'm not sure what that does. Immersive Reader, not sure. Configure Classroom, I'm sure that I haven't really played around with that. Floating Embed, I've, I, uh, I've played around. You can actually, um, if you sign up for their Facebook uh, community, which I'll talk about, you can get that. Uh, you can embed a video and it floats around here uh, on the student screen. Uh, I was thinking you could use it as like a Zoom feature, so your Zoom call could be floating down here while they're working. Uh, again, back to dashboard. But the ones that I've used the most here are strict paths on or off. If it's off, they can kind of just go wherever they want. Uh, and then down here, uh, self-exploration free. So again, that means they can kind of go wherever they want. But you can also sync it. Let me show you what that means. Uh, when you sync it, then what the students see is what you want them to see. So I just changed their screen to where it says information. Uh, I w you know, let's say I want everyone to go to this one, okay. So that's with the sync turned on, but then you can turn it back off, and then the the students are free to go back and work where they left off. Um, students' identity shown uh, or hot or hidden. All right, if you want to get out of there, just X out. Okay, so let let's just I'm going to show uh, go through this as as a student for a little bit. Uh, let's go down here. No. It needs two pieces. All right, so let's go to this one. All right, so let's say you're in the middle of a lesson and you want to ask a question. So I'm going to come up here. This is, again, the teacher's view. I'm going to click on this, and there are some of the slide apps we've gone over and then these tools as well. 
uh, the slide apps, they open up, uh, let's say we want to ask just a question, live submission, we're going to launch text, their screens automatically go to that, let's say you give them a, uh, all right folks, what color is the sky, and blue, and this person says magenta, and you can see their student responses here, you can mark them right, wrong, you can say no, why don't you try that one again, um, uh, blue, okay, that one's right, that one's right, and so on, and then with these, you just have to always remember that the text, the apps are running down here, you have to turn them off in order for the students to be able to move on, but you still get to see the data, and then you can either go back and launch another one, um, here's another feature, these tools down here, randomizer, if you want to call on a random student, uh, we'll just do instant selection for now. Okay, this comes up, and all right, student right, you got called on, you know, what is 3 plus 1? 4, oh, you got it right. Reset it, here we go again. All right, and okay, what is 3 plus 2? 5, good, you got it right again. Good job, you're on point today. But then you always have to make sure you end that, so that randomizer. Uh, to show you the deflections, uh, the students do like this, where... If they're about to get called on, they can kick the ball, and they can go back and forth until somebody gets called on. Okay, so they have to kind of be paying attention in order for them to not get picked. or So if, if they're not paying attention, they get stuck with it. But again, you always have to remember you got to turn those off for the students to be able to go on. Uh, timer, web link, teams. Uh, so what you'll notice is that up here, the students are get, they get points for getting things done and getting them right. Um, you can, you, right up here, you can see how many students are in the classroom, who's winning with points. You can also assign them to a team, number of teams, two, three, four, five, six. The selection can be random or student choice. Um, let's do two teams, uh, random. Now remember, we only have uh, two students in our, so one's blue team, one's brown team, and then they can earn points based on teams. So there might be a bunch of people on one team and the other team, and you could have it be a team effort, um, as you know, maybe have, I don't know, can you set it that way? Yeah, you, well, it's student choice, but in any case, you could have teams, and it makes it into a game, and that's where um, a couple of the things that they have built in here come in handy. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of what it looks like going through class. Again, there's a lot to it. Um, can't really go through everything, but that's a, that's kind of what it would look like with some of the options and the tools that are at your disposal. I just want to go through a few other options uh, that you can use right there in class. Um, even after class, they have these reports. Uh, you can see about where the students are. It goes by the uh, slide activities and slide uh, study sets. Uh, you can go in here and see who's completed. You can see how they've answered certain multiple choice questions. Uh, you can see how did they do on the color uh, study set. You can go to the student tab. You can see uh, percent activities completed, percent correct. Uh, you can you can export uh, in a, in different ways. Uh, it, but down here, I want to show this to you. Uh, students data may reset after seven days on the free plan so if, if you don't get the pro plan it's the the student data can be erased after seven days uh, I believe that's from from their account from your account I think it stays on there that's something I'll look into but if you get the pro plan it's ninety six dollars per year uh, but the, the data stays on for 30 days in any case there's the data that's why I signed the decks for a week and then that's then they're done. Um, other things you can do with this in class, and I, I just wanted to bring up, um, I think this is a good way to truly do hybrid model, because I think, you know, think of student middle being in your class and student right being at home doing this virtually. Uh, you can do things like, well, they both typed into this answer, uh, here are their submissions, and you could maybe... Um, use your Zoom or your Google Meet to show this to them that, okay, student middle, the one who's 
uh, here in school says uh, a hot dog is not because it needs two pieces of bread. Student right who is at home says yes, it has it has meat, which apparently is what makes uh, a sandwich a sandwich. Um, but you could do that, and you could show them the drawings. So it's a good way to have people interact who are both at home and doing it in your class, um, even if it's for just part of your day. Uh, I think it's a good way to get everyone together on the same page. So uh, just a few other things that deck toys can do uh, while you're working or even afterwards. You can you can go through and, and check their answers and you know get back to them and give them uh, good feedback. All right, I also want to mention some places you can go to get some help and ideas. Um, again, I was only able to scratch the surface of this, but one place you can go is this deck gallery. Uh, you can filter through your different subjects, levels, language, um, and you can preview the decks. You can look at them. Um, you can even play around with them. Uh, and then I think what you can do is you can make a copy and put it into your deck, or your, your dashboard, excuse me, um, and, and then use that uh, and, and assign it to your students. Uh, they have all sorts of different ones, uh, hundreds and hundreds. So you could take a look through there. There's a help section right over here. Uh, also on Facebook, uh, they have a Deck Toys, uh, their official, I believe, uh, group. And then they, there's a Deck Toys community, which I've looked through a lot, where it's all the users who come up with good ideas and uh, help you out. Uh, so those are some places you can look for help. Um, again, I know there's a lot to this. Uh, my my one thing I do want to say is perhaps uh, go through uh, the the deck that I assigned and just see how it works on your own. Uh, you know, it might be a little too advanced or maybe not advanced enough, depending on how tech savvy you are. Um, but yeah, if you need any help, let me know. And uh, I hope you found this useful. Thank you.